So let's get started with Spark SQL. Since Spark SQL module was stabilized in Spark 2 onwards, we would need to use Spark 2. The Spark SQL module can be accessed using usual Spark shell, using usual Spark application, using PySpark or Java. So we don't need to create any new application for using Spark SQL. And to use the Spark with Hadoop, as we have discussed earlier, we do not need to install Spark on Hadoop cluster. We would just have to export two variables, yarn conf dir and Hadoop conf dir, both having the location of configuration directory of Hadoop. Out of these two variables, yarn conf dir is the new one, while Hadoop conf dir is the old one and is capped for legacy reasons. On CloudX Lab, the version of default Spark installation as of now is Spark 1.5.4. It may get upgraded in the future. For now, we have installed more versions of Spark in slash user directory in your local file system. Please note that you can also download newer version of Spark in your home directory using wget and use it if you want a different version. Once you have set the variables, you can launch Spark shell from any of the installations in slash user folder. The Spark shell and any other binaries would be available in bin folder of the installation. Here, we are launching Spark shell with Spark's 2.0.2 version by using slash spark 2.0.2 slash bin slash spark dash shell. Once Spark shell has finished launching, you would see the Spark banner with the version displayed by the side and you would be provided a Scala prompt. This is where you write your Scala code. Had you used Spark R instead of Spark shell, you would see R prompt where you could write code in R. This prompt is essentially Scala prompt with few extra variables such as SC representing Spark context and Spark. So we are essentially at Scala prompt. How is it different from usual Scala prompt? There are two extra variables, SC and Spark, which are our gateway to Apache Spark. For the Spark SQL or Data Frames API, we will be using Spark session, which is available as simply Spark object highlighted in yellow. For usual RDD or dataset interactions, we can use SC variable. In case you want to create Spark application, which you can submit as a bad job instead of interactive way, you would need to create an object of a Spark session in main method of your application. Here, using builder method on Spark session object, we are creating Spark session builder. The method app name called on builder object here sets the name of application which will be displayed in the logs and context web UI. Also, we can set various configuration properties on builder by the way of calling config method on builder. Then Using get or create method on builder, we can create an Spark session object. Here, the name we have given to the session is Spark. It could be anything. The Spark shell or PySpark or any other Spark interactive shell are internally doing the same thing before launching respective interactive interfaces.
Please note that it is also useful to import the Spark implicits using import space Spark dot implicits dot underscore. When the Scala compiler finds a variable or expression of the wrong type, it would look for an implicit function, expression or class to provide the correct type. The implicit function or class needs to be in the current scope for the compiler to do its work. This is typically accomplished by importing an Scala object that contains implicit definitions. 